I don't know whether you were around um, in Southport last night when the vigil was taking place or, or when the uh, um, when the riot sort of kicked off, but uh, what have you got to say this morning about the, the state of the community right now? How, how, how sort of um, terrible uh, are they feeling today? Well, the community are very, very shaken and still obviously deeply traumatised by the events, the actual killings themselves and the mm. attack. Um, they have a variety of views, obviously, about the nature of the riot. I attended the vigil where many thousands of people were in the town centre mm. uh, and then went home. Everybody was in a peaceful frame of mind. Yeah. And I was genuinely surprised to learn on social media immediately afterwards from one of my councillors who just lives down the road in St Luke's Road about what was happening around the mosque. Mm which didn't seem to me particularly relevant to the events that have taken place, the awful events that took place on Monday. No. A lot of people have told me since we've been on the air this morning, since 6.30, that um, the reason why people kind of started attacking the mosque was because of an arrest that was made by the police uh, of another man who was seen coming towards the vigil with a knife. I mean, obviously, you know, the police have confirmed that they did arrest somebody uh, and they did find a knife on him. We don't know why he was heading that way. We don't know if he, if he was heading that way. But clearly there's, there's a problem, isn't there, with, with the, the, the sort of the, the powder keg nature of these kinds of events. Yes, when, when there's a very volatile and emotional mood um, and rumours are spread and misinformation via social media and so on, mm. A lot of things can happen that wouldn't ordinarily happen. But for context's sake, that is the only mosque in Southport. Southport has a very small Muslim community. Most of them are associated with the hospital and work for the NHS. Mm. And that did not seem any kind of appropriate target to be protesting by, no. less than committing acts of gross violence. No, sure. I mean, certainly nothing to suggest that the perpetrator of the horrendous killing of those three little girls is a Muslim in the first place, you know, so... No, but, what, I mean, but what I'm saying is, is, I suppose the difficulty with all of this is that there are some very angry people out there, and I've spoken to some who were at the, uh, the, the, the demonstration as well, before it kind of turned ugly, um, who were local people who wanted to express their anger um, at uh, what has been happening uh, in this country. And when it did turn, ro to turn you know, nasty, they left. So, you know, they, it's probably not right to say that everybody who was at that particular demo for some reason was in the wrong. It, it, it hasn't been helpful, I think, that the actual assailant, uh, the killer, uh, has not been identified. Yeah. I think as things unfold, we will almost certainly discover that this person had considerable mental health issues. I cannot imagine anybody committing acts like that who was in their right mind, who was not deranged, so horrible are the acts themselves. Mm. So I think what we're looking at is a situation similar to what you got in Nottingham uh, a few months back, uh, where you have a, a lone individual behaving in a totally atrocious way. Um, and what we need to be looking at, essentially, is the extent to which mental health uh, services are available to them in the community and the track history of that. Unfortunately, that can't be shared with anybody at the moment because there's all sorts of legal requirements, you know, connected with minors and so on. And, mm. or, um, and as a result, people are putting their own narratives in place. And well, that's part of the problem, isn't it? That, yeah. that we now live in an area, an, an era where you can't know any longer, as, as perhaps in the past, not just 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 sort of clamp down on, on on information and make it an information blackout it can't really be done and the thing about the guy in nottingham was that he was kind of randomly running around in the streets murdering people but this guy deliberately targeted a particular place you know a children's dance center you know a children's holiday center and that would suggest that you know he's not deranged he's deliberately he took a taxi there he got out of the taxi he walked into the into the place and started killing people so well, for some the, reason the, he picked on that particular place didn't he we, we simply don't know I and mean, it seems unlikely to a lot of people in the southport i mean banks is a little while outside southport it's odd to know how he would actually know about that event in the first place i know hard street very well mm. I was actually genuinely surprised to discover, having delivered leaflets along Hart Street for many, many years, that there was actually a dance facility in there behind mm. uh, some of the shops, some of the, some of the houses rather. Um, so here's somebody who goes to a place who's would be 
as like not normally found there or even right. know was Well, this is what I'm saying. There. I mean, it's not. It's clearly not a place that you would, you would stumble upon at random. No, it was, put, it was put to me the other day, this might be because there is some personal connection between the uh, killer and somebody who was actually at that, and that for that reason he knew about it. Mm. In other words, what I'm trying to say is it, it, it's not a... If, if you were wishing to do something in order to, um, you know, to make a horrible offence in order to get maximum publicity and so on, um, it is not the place you'd first think of, a company like that. No. Uh, but what I'm saying is, is that some of the other cases which we've been told have been the result of somebody suffering from mental illness tend to be much more random, tend to be much more uh, sort of, you know, unfocused. I mean, I, 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 my, my first thought initially, looking at the sheer horror of what is done, is that nobody in their right mind, other than a deranged person, could have done that. You think of the sheer horror of it. Um, my second thought is then, well, why that particular place? Now, I don't have an answer to that. You don't have an answer to that. We'll have to wait for the police investigation to reveal an answer to that. But what is dangerous, I think, is when people start imposing their own narratives on that. I mean, that he is a Muslim, that he is known to be MI16. All these sort of things were circulating on social media, yeah. which people had no grounds whatsoever. Sure. But that's the point. You know, if, for example, some some actual facts were released about his identity without necessarily having to name him, which have now come out, that might have been helpful. And I think the police have got to look at doing that because as more of these situations seem to happen, you know, clearly the police have to get ahead of the speculation. If they can't get ahead of the speculation... Absolutely right there. I think they were aware of that, but I don't think they went probably as far as they needed to go. Mm in the sense that they, they did made very explicit that the person was not in a, uh, hadn't come over on a small boat or anything like that, was born in Cardiff, and they made that explicit and modified their statement in order to amplify um, and uh, what, 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 the, what they mm. could say, and also to eradicate suspicions people might have, which might then lead to the kind of consequences we're looking at now. Um, but they are limited by the law, quite obviously, and preeminently, and there's a limit to what they can say. The police were managing the media operation throughout the day, and they said what they felt they could in yeah. circumstances. And I think they got it quite wrong, I'm afraid. I'm going to say that. Um, it, it, it's very difficult, Mike, you know, when you know people have not met the situation on a repeated basis to know how you get it right. Uh, you, I mean, I, I, you know, you, your point of view is, I think, valid as it stands.